All right, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, thanks so much for calling the show. You're welcome. Crockett, what a name. I, I tell you, you know, when they gave me a choice, now I originally came in and as Rocco and they told me that wasn't original enough. Kind of similar to how your last name is Blood and they just didn't want to go with that. And they gave me a choice between a bunch of terrible names and one of them on the list was Crockett. And I said, man, it's like the Crockett Cup, the NWA, so I, I stuck with that. You know, in the, in the mid-Atlantic days, you know, Jim Crockett's promotions uh, in the Carolinas, uh, you know, I worked for that man for a number of years. And that's actually where, uh, you know, the Ric Flair, Ricky Steamboat feud started back in uh, 1977. I'm, I'm well aware. Like I said, that's the whole reason I took Crockett. And everybody thought I took it because of Davy Crockett. I said, I took it because of pro wrestling. I'm a huge fan and I'm a giant fan of your legacy of your career. I've been watching for years. And I've always wanted to talk to you because I grew up in uh, West Virginia. I moved there, and there was always this lure that you were always at tournaments, but I never saw you at any of them. But everybody always said you were always at wrestling tournaments near and around Ohio and West Virginia. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Um, uh, when I got out in 94, I opened up a, a, a big health club in 95, and um, I had a designated room to which I called it, it was the mat room, and I got a collegiate rest, full-size wrestling mat. And what we did for free in the evenings as the parents would come in to work out instead of taking your, your son to maybe ch uh, child care, drop him off. And I think between the hours of 6 and 8 on uh, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, we would teach our young kids amateur high school style of wrestling. And um, we ended up with a 20-kid squad that uh, we traveled all around, you know, the Carolinas. And, and, and uh, we went to the Tournament of Champions in Ohio. Yes, yes, um, that, that was the one. Yeah. Because people would always yeah. have T-shirts with your signature on it. And, they, and everybody yeah. knew I was the pro wrestling nut on the team. And they'd be like, oh, you just missed Steamboat. And I'm like, I always thought it was just a lie. Everybody was joking with me. No, no, we, uh, we, uh, we do the circuit with AAU. And our kids uh, from eight on up to uh, right before high school. And then, of course, the high school programs would take over. But uh, we had a good, good group. I had better than, than me. I, you know, I had a decent amateur background when I was in school. But I had some really good – I had two other coaches uh, uh, that were really, really good. And they, they were really good on, on helping our kids out. And we ended up with four kids going all the way uh, through high school, becoming state champions, and getting full-blown uh, wrestling scholarships to uh, colleges. Uh, four of our our kids. So uh, it was a it was for me it was a way of giving back to the community and, and helping our, our young talent out. See, that's that's something I always like when I get to talk to professional wrestlers. You you hear so many of the same stories, and that's all right because you know there's always some sort of a backstory that needs to be told. But you never hear about the cool things that they that you guys have done outside of the wrestling world, like amateur wrestling. So I guess what I wanted to know was if wrestling didn't work out, did you ever have like dreams of becoming a coach? Well, you know, um, before I got into wrestling, I, I was, I started to attend a, a junior college in St. Petersburg, uh, Florida is where I grew up. And I was uh, thinking about transferring over to Tampa university. Um, and what I wanted to major in is that, uh, uh, I wanted to be a phys ed coach and then, after hours, I wanted to uh, help coach football. I was a decent football player. I was a power back. And, uh, and then also help, you know, coach in wrestling in school. So uh, I had those aspirations before making the final, final push and the move uh, to get into pro wrestling. So what it, – it, it's, it's crazy because I wanted to be a gym teacher. I wanted to be a wrestling coach. Same thing. And then I found radio through – I went to one college class. I took radio, and I fell in love with it. And this is where I've gone since – what was your, your moment that you went, let's put coaching aside and let's see pro wrestling? Because you were a bodybuilder, too. Yeah, I, I did, you know, I, I did, you know, a lot of working out with the weights. And, um, what was it? I was talking to the dean of boys, um, and he was telling me about um, there was an influx of coaches uh, within the state of Florida. And what he meant was that there was a lot of northern coaches that were we moving, transferring down to Florida during the last few years of their career. In other words, they might have had, you know, a 15 or 20 year coaching uh, background. They wanted to retire in Florida and finish up there and, and teach and coach. So for a new kid to come out of uh, college 
uh, with no coaching experience and, and going up against a bunch of guys that, that had 15 and 20 years, that he was sort of telling me that the waiting list would probably be pretty long right? to, to get a job. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I said, well, you know, I've always been a big fan of, of pro wrestling. On Tuesday nights, I used to drive from St. Pete over to Tampa at the uh, Armory. Right, right. Uh, me, me, me and the guys on the, on the wrestling team, and we would sit there and, and watch those guys in the ring and just, you know, just have a great time with it. Now, this, is, um, this has always bothered me because a lot of the pro wrestlers uh, from your generation on, they were all on the wrestling team. My school, if you were a wrestler, you weren't allowed to like pro wrestling. You just weren't. And I never understood why. And my coach used to tell me I had to stop watching that bullshit <laughs> and focus on wrestling. I used to drive me insane. I was like, Kurt Angle's wrestling when I was in high school. I said, look, he's an Olympic champion. They just yeah. didn't get it. I never understood why I wasn't allowed to like pro wrestling. Well, uh, I'm right there with you. I don't understand why your coach had that uh, you know, mindset. It was the whole team, everybody. Um, it, it, they all thought I was a wacko because I like pro wrestling. Oh, really? Everybody. Well, I, I never it, understood it. Me and, and me and about four or five guys on the squad, we'd go over there on Tuesday nights and, and, and just root it up. And then the next day of practice, talk about it. So uh, it was, I guess it was cool with us. <laughs> it must have been. So getting into the wrestling, there's something I, I'm dying to know. Uh, you know, you're legendary for your matches with Macho Man Ric Flair. But your arm drag is one of the is like a thing of beauty. Where did that come from? When did you like? How did you decide that you were going to make the most beautiful arm drag in the business? Well, uh, you know, this question has been asked to me on several occasions, and I, I come I come forward with the truth, and I I'm going to reflect back to my high school days and driving over to Tampa on Tuesday night and watching Jack Briscoe wrestle whoever it might have been Dory Funk, Terry Funk. You know, uh, Mongolian Stomper, Archie Goldie. But Jack was the one that his arm drag was so different because he would get up in the air. Everybody else is doing arm drags, and they're still sort of standing on the mat. He would leave his feet. So I know everybody talks about Ricky Steamboat's arm drag when I go to seminars and, and, and teach and coach and all that. And then, uh, half the guys on, that show up when, hey, teach me your arm drag, teach me your arm drag. <laughs> but, so – you know, I come clean with the fact that I actually stole that from Jack Briscoe. He was the originator of it. Now, did, is there any difference between yours and his, or is yours just completely stolen? Um, I got higher up in the air. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it's just it's just like what everybody does. Everybody sees something great, and, and they improve and, on and, it. And when you got the next generation and the next generation of guys that, you know, come into pro wrestling, they, they take a certain move and they, they take it up a notch. They so, can take it to the next level. So, you know, and, so, you know Jimmy uh, Snuka and myself did a lot of things off the top rope, and we sort of pioneered that. Well, then you look at the, you look at the guys nowadays as the things they're doing off the top rope. So obviously, they've taken, you know, they watch Snuka and I, but then they've taken it to the next level. Oh, yeah. I did the same thing with I did the same thing with Jack's arm drag. I just made sure that I could get up as high as I could, and every time you know year after year after year, it was just getting better and better and better. So has anybody improved your arm drag that you've seen yet, or no? Because I don't think so. I have not. I have not seen it. Well, that's got to make you feel good. No one's improved on your work yet. No, well, <laughs> not to say not to say hey, the, the next group of guys is going to happen. You know. So, since we're on a country music station, do you listen to country music at all? What kind of music does Ricky Steamboat like? Well, there are two types. I'm a, a '70s and '80s rock and roll guy. Oh, excellent! You know, and I'll go, I'll go, I'll go back to the late '60s because that's when I was in high school, '69, uh, '70, '71. But you know, I do, I do enjoy country. Um, I, I will say this more. Oh, I'm going to say '70s, '80s. You know, old school country. That, that's that's uh, more than that's more than fair. I I'm I'm a big '80s rock and roller myself. I like the '80s metal music, so I didn't yeah. think that'd be into your wheelhouse. You you always came I'm, down you always came down with the dragon. I always thought you'd be more of like a peaceful, mellow, almost classical music kind of guy. No, you know I ne never never uh, no. I like a good beat. I like something with a good thump. I also like music that. Uh, Oh God, it has a good story behind it, you know. And the classic good country western stuff has got some good 
stories and and even the even the rock and roll stuff that I listened to, you, you know, you could relate to what they were singing about. So, what's your favorite rock and roll band? If you can label one or two. Oh God, you know, <laughs> honest, I, I'd have to say the Eagles. The Eagles, hey, that's a good band yeah. to like. I um, I would have to say Eagles. You know, I, I I also am a big you know, Creedence Clearwater Revival guy. You know, I like Creedence. You got, you got some good Fourth. Of, I want to come to your house for the Fourth of July. It sounds like you have good music. Probably have some good cooking going on, and I can learn yeah. the arm drag. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I might get the torch out and blow a little fire on the Fourth. Do you, do you still pull that trick out of the uh, the old bag? I, I have. Uh, I'd be a liar to say that I have not done that on on a couple of Fourth of Julys. <laughs> <laughs> you are going to be at the Sands Bethlehem Event Center July 23rd with your good pal. I'm assuming he's still your good pal. You still keep in touch with yeah. Ric Flair? Yes. Um, I wanted to throw this out there for everybody that's listening, and that is uh, our, our, our career of rivalry spans about 20 years, going back and forth with each other for 20 years. And um, here we are 40 years later, and um, this will be the first time that the wrestling fans will have an opportunity to, to get to both of us on the stage to, to do a Q&A and ask us any kind of question that they want to ask, it, whether it be about our career, a rivalry, things that happened backstage, or, you know, at a 7-Eleven. <laughs> um, this will be the very first time, and, um, and I don't know when it will ever happen again. You know, he's got his schedule and I've got mine. A lot of time we'll cross paths, but, you know, we're never hooked up at the same venue at the same time. So this will be the first time the fans will have this golden opportunity to really ask. Uh, and I'll bet you they're going to ask some real interesting questions about the two of us. Oh, I'm sure they are. You'll, are is there butterflies in the stomach about this event? Well, you know, I had an old-timer told me, it says, anytime you get ready to perform, whether it be in the ring or in front of the TV just to cut a promo, if you haven't got that little butterfly that's still fluttering in your stomach, that's when it tells you that you need to find another, another profession. You need to get out. And uh, I can remember up until my last match, uh, uh, and then oh, at WrestleMania 25 when I came out there with uh, Roddy Piper, God bless him, and Snooka, and we had the match uh, with Jericho. Yeah. You know, still had the big butterflies. Uh, three weeks later, I had a single match with, uh, with Chris Jericho at uh, Backlash at a pay-per-view, butterflies. And even doing stuff like this, coming out on stage, I, I still get that little flutter. That little guy in my stomach reminds me, you know. So it, it's, it's for the love of the business, and, uh, and I'm so happy I'm doing what I'm doing now, representing the WWE as a spokesperson, like an ambassador to the company. And this is what I do now. They send me out, and I... And, it's good. Speak on behalf of the company and, and myself and, and, uh, and my career. The butterflies are still turning. That's a good sign. I guess you still got wrestled in the blood. Well, you know, you won't believe this or not. I, I, I've, got, I've got one fluttering right now as we speak. So uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm always, always excited about doing anything related to, to our profession. Before I let you go, give me one thing most people or a lot of people wouldn't know about Ricky Steamboat. One fact that someone might not know about you. Hmm. Hmm. Well, you know, uh, I, I, I don't want to bring religion in, into it, but I, I will say this. At the age of 50, I was baptized, and it really turned my life around. Um, it was at the same time I got my son baptized. I, you, I think he was like about, 40, about 15 years old at the time. Um, so it's never too late. No, my wife just got baptized at, I think, uh, she, what is she, 28 years old, and I went with her, yeah. and it was really yeah. moving. Like, you know, I, I was baptized at a young age, and, it kind of brought me back into the church as well because it, you know, it was just you, you felt something different. It was it was a bizarre feeling for the first time I felt in a long time. Oh yeah, and uh, I was I was fifty when 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 I got baptized. So uh, that's something that uh, you know I've never even said out publicly about until now. Uh, that's something that the fans uh, I don't know if they ever wondered about. You know, what's my beliefs and this and that. Uh, I know I, I do believe that there is a God out there and. Uh, um, I'm sort of a type of guy. You don't have to be a Christian or a Catholic, or just so long as you 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 have a a, a God that you believe in, and um, you know help help steer your life if, if uh, when called upon. It's always good to believe in something. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt. Well, we no got, 
There was a little. It's sort of, it, it, you know, you can think of all. I, I think of all the accolades and all the things that have happened throughout my career. But then there's there are moments in which you, I, I become really humble, and uh, and that, and that, that's these moments when we talk about religion and stuff like that. Well, this is a perfect little sneak preview into July 23rd. San Bethlehem Event Center, a Q&A panel. You can ask yourself, you can ask Ric Flair any questions you want. They're going to do their best to answer it. Thank you so much for the time and the interview, Rick, the Dragon Steamboat. Okay, my friend. Thank I, you for having me on. I will see you July 23rd. You're going to be there. I will t- absolutely. I already got into my calendar. I'm not working that day. Okay, great. Hook, hook us up and we'll take some pictures together. I, uh, you, you got it. Okay. Have a good one.